Good morning, guys. It is Thursday, January the 11th, 2024. Uh, quick plug, my referral links are in the description box below. Uh, you can find referral links to Apex Trader Funding, uh, Top Step Trader Funding, Trading View, which are the charts that you see in front of you, uh, as well as American Express Blue Cash uh, Preferred. You get a $75 statement credit if you sign up for American Express Blue Cash Preferred. 6% cash back on groceries, 3% uh, cash back on gasoline and transit purchases, 1% on all of your purchases, no annual fee in the first year. You get a $75 statement credit if you sign up using my referral link in the description box below, guys. Again, that's American Express Blue Cash Preferred. You can find my referral link in the description box below. All right, guys, this video is going to be on the Inner Circle Trader uh, or ICT fair value gap. I have discussed this topic before, but I intend on going through the, the various models that Michael Huddleston teaches uh, again and again. So in this video, we're going to very quickly discuss the ICT fair value gap or FVG. Okay, guys, uh, in, in an effort to keep this video short and to keep your attention, uh, I will try and keep the video short. The ICT fair value gap is a three candle formation uh, that shows a market moving through an illiquid area, otherwise known as a low volume node if you use volume profile, um, and it shows a market inefficiency. So the ICT fair value gap is a three, uh, a three bar or a three candle pattern where you can see that there's no, there's only a candle body. There are no overlapping candle wicks. So uh, the ICT bearish fair value gap would be a black candle, as you can see here, that has no, uh, it has no wicks that go through it. What this signifies is a market inefficiency. It means that the market moved up too quickly or moved down too quickly and there was not enough liquidity to absorb all of the orders that were coming in and so the market rapidly rose or it rapidly fell uh, in a period of illiquidity. It's, um, it's a form of inefficiency basically. ICT has a number of different market inefficiencies. One of them is the long wick inefficiency uh, and, and this one is the uh, ICT fair value gap inefficiency. Now. There's various ways that you can use the ICT fair value gap and a number of different patterns that come along with the ICT fair value gap. Very quickly, I just want to remind you how you identify the two different fair value gaps, the ICT bullish and the ICT bearish fair value gap. The ICT bullish fair value gap is where you have a green candle or an up candle in which there are no overlapping wicks. So you have candle one, candle two, and candle three, and candle three, Candle two should only have a candle body, okay? And it's, uh, I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. So there's a bullish fair value gap. There is a bullish fair value gap, bullish fair value gap there. Um, they're fairly common, guys. They're, they're not super rare by any, by any means, um, but you should know how to identify them. The ICT bearish fair value gap, we have one here, we have one here. Uh, have one here. They're not the most difficult things to spot. There are three a three bar pattern where the second the second candle in the pattern only has a candle body. It is a sign of illiquidity or inefficiency in the market. For that period of time at that at that given price, the market was illiquid, and you can see that because there's no overlapping wicks. So how do you use the ICT fair value gap? Or in other words, how do I use the ICT fair value gap? Well, in terms of my entries, I only ever enter on limit orders, uh, or at least I try to. Uh, I try only ever to enter on limit orders. And so how I use fair value gaps is I use them as an entry or an exit mechanism. In other words, I look to see uh, usually the 50% so the 50% of the ICT fair value gap is what he refers to as the consequent encroachment. Um, the consequent encroachment of a fair value gap. And what I like to do is I like to place my limit orders at about the 50% of a fair value gap. So let's say, for example, you saw this large fair value gap here and you put it out into quarters like I have here and you placed a limit order at 47.20. Uh, you could see that the market came much later, traded through it, and you would have been in a significant period of, of, of uh, 
in this example, you would have experienced some drawdown, but ultimately that trade was uh, very profitable. And it's the same thing uh, on the bearish fair value gaps. You could have entered a limit order here, uh, and you could see that that your trade would have become at least profitable for a period of time. So I like to enter in um, at the 50% of a fair value gap. If there's no uh, other levels or other factors that would want to make me put my order further at an extreme like a rejection block uh, or a wick inefficiency. So that's how I like to use the fair value gap. Um, I also like to use the fair value gap as a uh, as an exit mechanism. So if you're holding a position long or you're holding a position short and you're looking for uh, somewhere on the chart that you can take profit, uh, taking profit at the 50% or the 25% of a fair value gap is a is a good idea. You're basically, what ICT talks about the fair value gap is that the market should trade back th uh, to it and through it. Okay, so when you have a, an, a market inefficiency, like a fair value gap, ICT will teach you that in, in most circumstances, the market should trade to it and then through it. So it's not necessarily always where the market is exactly going to turn around. Um, but it's, it gives you an idea of where the market should go in the future more likely than not. Is it perfect? No. But if you have a big fat fair value gap, let's say on the, on the daily chart here, on the MES, we have fair value gaps lower um, and we have fair value gaps lower which would make you believe if you're an ICT trader that at some point the market should come in and, and retest or trade back through these market inefficiencies at some point in 2024. Uh, and that's kind of basically how you should think about it. It gives you a roadmap for where you think that the market should go. Um, it's a three bar pattern. I mentioned that before, how you visually identify it. So uh, guys, the ICT fair value gap is a market inefficiency that you can draw into quarters and you can use it in various ways. I like to use it as an entry mechanism uh, as well as a, a sort of idea of where the market should go in the future. Um, and I also like to use it as a target for an exit mechanism. Uh, you will oftentimes find that in terms of entering in on fair value gaps, usually the rejection block or another ICT pattern will be higher or lower that would probably give you a better, more precise entry. Um, so I'd, I would be cautious purely entering in on uh, just on 50% of fair value gaps. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that's what I have for you guys. This has been my video recap on the ICT fair value gap. You can find more by going to ICT's channel. He has whole dissertations, seminars, basically, on the ICT fair value gap. In addition, guys, I'm putting this video into my ICT day trading basics uh, playlist. You can find other videos I've made on fair value gaps there. By the way, I think it, uh, it should be needless to say Needless to say, guys, the ICT fair value gap can be found on any time frame. So it, it's not it's not respective of any any time frame. You can find it on the one minute, the one second, all the way up to the monthly and the quarterly charts. So it's just a model. It's just a formation, and you can find it on all sorts of different time frames. It's not time frame specific, in other words. Okay, guys, uh, that puts us at about the eight minute mark of this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, you can find more on my ICT Day Trading Basics playlist. Please use my referrals in the description box below. Thank you.